Today's video is part one of a mini series and I'm going to be looking at the kettlebell. Pros, cons, exercises, do's, don'ts, don't likes, whatever. I don't enjoy kettlebells at all. If you want to like, subscribe, you'll see the future videos on rings, dumbbells, barbells, pee bars, accessories, whatever. So uh, yeah, let's jump in. There's loads of YouTubers and they start their videos with like coins and card tricks and sleight of hand stuff, but uh, yeah, not for me. It's not even a real knife, it's like a practice butterfly thing. So the kettlebell, mine's a bit worn. I've had these years, but uh, I actually love that sort of, I've been used and abused look. So Vladimir Putin invented the kettlebell in 1706. I don't know, actually, I don't really know a lot of history of the kettlebell. I know the Russians do Turkish get-ups with them. So Russian kettlebell, Turkish get-ups, Bulgarian split squats. So I have a love-hate relationship with the kettlebell. I actually love using them. There's a couple of exercises I'm gonna cover in this video that I think are absolutely brilliant. Give me biceps any day. What I hate about the kettlebell is other people using them. <laughs> <laughs> because generally they're shit at it. Like I am not the best kettlebell guy in the world. I'm not even I'm not even a, uh, a low level bad kettlebell guy. There are a lot of guys a lot better at this sort of stuff than me. And a lot of my friends are actually very good at this sort of stuff. But from kettlebells I've sort of taken the bits that I like and the bits that fit into my fitness toolbox that I can apply to clients or my own training. But the biggest problem with the kettlebell is people not really knowing how to use it. So people learn kettlebells in a couple of different ways. Either learn it, uh, like I did a cert in England in Andy Bolton's gym, who's like the world, world's best powerlifter uh, squatter at one stage years ago. Most of my kettlebell knowledge I learned from friends who were competitive in kettlebells and did like Javor export or they'd done the strong first stuff so I sort of just sponged off a lot of their stuff because they were totally into it. The other way people learn kettlebell stuff is via YouTube. Oh, don't be doing that. <laughs> um, from personal entertainers in the gym or in a class setting uh, and the problem with learning kettlebells in a class setting. If the class is too big and the instructor is maybe not that good, you can miss a lot of the small details. I personally only do two exercises with a kettlebell. That's not to say that kettlebell exercises I don't do are wrong or bad or whatever. I just enjoy these two and I don't really enjoy the other stuff. So it's very personal preference to me. So what are the two exercises I enjoy? First up, we got the kettlebell swing. Now the swing is like the bread and butter of kettlebell moves and yeah, it's the one that's probably done the worst out of everything. So these jump up in, like this is a 12, my next one is a 16 and they go 20, 24 and they work their way up. Um, so a lot of guys when they're doing kettlebell programming will hang out at a weight and then do like a step jump and that's part of their programming. As opposed to maybe the progressive overload where you just incrementally increase on some of your barbell stuff. Again, you can do it, you can do it both ways, but the way the kettlebell jumps up in the four kgs, um, you might find you hang out somewhere, work on your volume and then take a bit more of a, a step up. I remember actually seeing a girl and a guy in a sports shop and they were looking at the fitness equipment and I saw the man up the kettlebells and I was thinking, don't you do it, don't do it, don't be go. And they picked up a kettlebell and uh, you could tell that they were excited because it was like, oh, here's a kettlebell and I want to get stuck in and do some kettlebell stuff. But you just thought, oh, if these guys don't know what they're doing, they'll just go home and swing that bell about and, oh. So I would always say, if you're gonna learn a kettlebell swing, you want to really know the kettlebell deadlift or a deadlift or a sumo deadlift or any sort of hip hinge Romanian deadlift. There's another name, Romanian. Turkish get up, Romanian deadlift, Russian kettlebell, Bulgarian split squat. 
So two of the biggest mistakes I see with the kettlebell swing, uh, probably squatting the kettlebell instead of using the hips. And this is common with people's deadlifts as well in general. The other big mistake would be using the arms. So trying to lift the kettlebell when really the arms should just happen to be attached. It's the hips that are generating the force, not the, the grip. And you'll see some of the likes of the, the crossfitters would do the American kettlebell swing and there's another one, <laughs> the American swing. So you've got the American kettlebell swing, Bulgarian split squat, a Turkish get up, a Russian kettlebell. So what does it work? Posterior chain, get your lower back, hamstring, bum, legs, hip. Your grip will get a bit of work, but ideally you don't want to overly squeeze the kettlebell. There's a bit of pulsing can go on as you're doing your, your swing. Heart and lungs can take an absolute beating. I'm gonna die! Also great for fat loss, actually. Well, fat loss is always a, uh, it's a nutrition thing and a strength and muscle thing, but it's hard to beat the kettlebell swing. So the other exercise I do with the, the uh, kettlebell is the Turkish get up with the Russian kettlebell. Um, the great thing about this actually is you do not need a kettlebell. Um, and some of the practice drills you can actually just use with zero or um, you try balancing like something on your fist. But basically you start from lying on the floor and you work your way up through sort of seven stages until you're standing and you sort of work your way back to the floor. So Turkish get up's a great move. I actually have two DVDs and a book, I think, on the Turkish get up. And obviously only small things. Uh, maybe Grey Cook. God, I can't remember these guys' names. I forget. But the Turkish get up is a massive sort of full body workout. The MMA guys generally love it. Um, there's a lot of core in it. You got a lot of rotational stuff in it. Um, shoulder stability's in there. Uh, hip mobility. And you're standing up with a weight. Oh, it's 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 a it's a good move. It's a great. Um, move if you're stuck for time, stuck for space, and you just want to rattle out a bit of a workout. I was actually on a course in London, and it wasn't a kettlebell course, it was like for a personal training thing that I had to pay for and do, and it still grates me that I had to pay for this thing. Um, but they got a guy out of, the, out of the group and says, oh, who, who knows how to do a Turkish get-up? And I thought, oh, this would be good. Um, and this English guy sort of got out and um, he did a complete bastardization of a Turkish get-up, and I always thought, it's crazy how much these guys don't know. Kettlebells is one of those things where the more you get into it, the more you realize how much is in it, and the more you just, it, it's massive. See, I like to pick the bits that I think apply best in my own workouts, my clients' workouts, and the type of guys that I work with. There actually is a third exercise I really like, which is the goblet squat. Um, for people who can't really squat a barbell or shouldn't squat a barbell yet and they need to understand squat mechanics, a goblet squat. Actually I have a fourth, no I don't, I'm not going to go any further because I'll end up just doing a whole YouTube video on every kettlebell exercise and why you should do them. So my advice, uh, if you need help with kettlebells, ask someone that knows but if in doubt, start slow and build it up. We're still in lockdown with COVID-19 and Jen cut my hair and it actually looks like she did it with this. <laughs>